This is the new Oppo Reno7 Pro 5G that has just launched in India and I know what you're thinking. What's new? What are the new upgrades? Let's check it out. So the new Reno7 Pro, like most Renos in the past, brings a new design. First interesting design element is this. Is the camera bump has this light surrounding it. Oppo calls it the Orbit Breathing Light and this is actually interesting. The light is kind of subtle, soft, not very bright, so it does not look too flashy or in your face, but it is noticeable and I think also useful. This is sort of a breathing light that lights up when you get a call, text or any other notification and also when the phone is charging. Do you guys want other manufacturers to bring a notification light like this? Drop your thoughts in the comments down below. Now these are the options for the breathing light and as for any battery implications, it's a very subtle light but battery performance is something I'll have to check. Also it only has this one color and I really hope Oppo brings support for proper RGB so that you can customize different lights or different notifications. Anyway, the back has the Oppo glow shimmering effect and this new pattern. Oppo has used a new LDI tech to etch the pattern here, giving the back a really brushed matte finish. I also like its black weighted, which is a proper matte black phone. The Reno7 Pro also has good in hand feel. It is lightweight and it's very sleek and you must have noticed the flat edges that we also saw on the Reno6. Other points to note, the Reno7 Pro has no micro SD slot, just this dual SIM slot. The fingerprint scanner is on the front in the screen. And if you're wondering, there's no IP rating or wireless charging support. One new addition to the design is stereo speakers. There's one speaker at the bottom right here, and there's one speaker in the earpiece. Now this is good because the Reno6 Pro did not have this, so I'm glad Oppo brought it in the Reno7 Pro. Stereo speakers means that the music and video experience on the Reno7 Pro is good, and that's also because the display is also pretty nice. I like that there's no weird chain here, the bezels are kind of unified and I like the display quality. It's vibrant and sharp as you'd expect on AMOLED and I would have liked 120Hz but 90Hz feels smooth too. Coming to the Reno7 Pro's cameras, the front camera is actually interesting. It's the first phone to bring the Sony IMX709 sensor on the front which has RGBW which means white pixels which in turn means more light can be captured in low light situations. It is also set to capture less noise and take clearer shots and it has DUL HDR support which captures two photos at the same time, a long exposure one and a short exposure one for better details and better backgrounds. Now we have seen this tech in rear cameras but it's interesting in the front camera because I took selfies with the Reno7 Pro in harsh backlight conditions and it always managed to capture details on the face as well as in the background. When I was taking these selfies, the background was always overexposed in the viewfinder. The IMX709 also takes brighter shots in low light. I haven't compared the Reno7 Pro with any other phone, but the shots are definitely bright and sharp in low light. I also noticed that the front camera switches from 85 degrees to a 90 degree angle when it detects more than one person. One complaint I have here is that with a capable front camera like this, they should have added 4K video recording support on the front. Anyway, here are the rear camera specs with the IMX766 sensor headlining things. And they're all the cool camera features like the portrait mode where you can change the aperture, the AI highlight video which now has better color tuning, the dual video feature which lets you use the front and the rear camera at the same time. There's also bokeh flare portrait which takes shots like this. Yeah, it's pretty cool and there's also bokeh flare support in videos now. Here's a video from the usual video mode and here's a video in the same location with bokeh flare mode on. See the difference? The effect in the bokeh flare mode is pretty cool no doubt and I like it works in both daytime and low light. Now cool camera features apart, the camera performance seems pretty good in most of the photos I've taken so far. Most photos look high quality, be it in daytime or even in low light, which is not surprising considering it's the IMX 766, which we have seen perform well in other phones. Moving on, the Reno7 Pro also brings good hardware specs as you can see here. Now I know you're wondering what's new in the Dimensity 1200 Max. Well, it's the same powerful MediaTek Dimensity 1200, but the Max version is a custom chip designed by MediaTek and Oppo for the Reno7 Pro to bring features like AI PQ for better HDR visuals and AI D Blur for clearer selfies. Apart from that, it's the same and that's fine. I mean, the Reno7 Pro is a very snappy phone in my brief usage and I've used other Dimensity 1200 phones, so the performance should be good in the long run. BGMI fans, the phone supports HDR Ultra and Smooth Extreme graphics and the gaming performance in my usage so far has been top notch. On the software front, there's ColorOS 12 and if you want to know all about its features, you can check out our video from the card above. As for pre-installed apps, there are quite a lot of them as you can see, but most of them can be uninstalled. One thing that's surprising here is that ColorOS 12 on the Renaissance Pro is based on Android 11 and not Android 12. Lastly, these are the battery specs of the phone and the 65 watt Superbook charger is pretty fast. It can take the phone from 10 to 100% in around 30 minutes, which is actually great. 
Apart from that, we asked you if you had any questions on this phone on Instagram. Yeah, follow us already if you haven't because you can get in your questions too. So I think I've answered most of the questions, but there are a few that I haven't. So let me just answer them really quickly. First up, software update. So Oppo has confirmed that the Reno series will get two major Android updates and four years of security patches. And the next question is, is it metal and glass? Well, the frame here is metal aluminum and the back is glass. Carrier aggregation support. So I checked and the Reno 7 Pro does support it. In fact, as you can see, it supports 4CA, which is just really good. Is there any thermal throttling? Well, I ran the CPU throttling test a couple of times on this phone and these were the results. So as you can see, it's not a problem. Also, if you're wondering about the 5G bands, the Reno 7 Pro has 11 5G bands. Now, before I conclude things, I know some of you guys also want to know about the Oppo Reno 7. This is the phone and also has some pretty good specs with AMOLED, Dimensity 965 watt charging and like the Reno 7 Pro, it's a very sleek and nice phone. Coming to the conclusion, the Oppo Reno 7 Pro 5G is actually a pretty solid phone with some really interesting features. See, the Orbit Breathing Light is a really cool take on the notification lights and I like the upgrades from the previous gen Reno, be it the stereo speakers, the new front camera, the upgraded rear camera as well as the design. So the phone looks pretty balanced. Now, I don't know the price of the phone at the time of shooting this video, and I think the price will give us a more clear idea. So let's wait for that. I will be adding the price of the Reno 7 Pro in the comments as well. So make sure to let us know what you think of the Reno 7 Pro in the comments. Also, give this video a like, make sure to share it and subscribe to our channel for more amazing tech videos. Also, hit the bell icon. That's very important. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one. Your Windows laptop can't do this. This is universal control which lets you control us.